Hello everyone and welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. Today we are on episode number 214. And today we're going to be talking about the Linkit module. As always, I am Shane Thomas, and you can follow me on Twitter at smthomas3. Also check out the Code Karate Patreon page. So, what is the Linkit module? Well, if you've ever tried to use the CK editor that comes with Drupal 8, you'll know that you can definitely make links to other sites, but if you want to link individually within your site, let's say you have an article and you're referencing a past blog post or article that you wrote and you want to link to it. Well, what you'd have to do is you'd have to go and you'd have to copy that link and then you'd have to paste it in. But what happens if the URL alias would have changed for some reason? Or, you know, it's just an extra step that you have to do. You have to go out and you have to copy that link. So this is a handy module that makes linking to content within your site a lot easier. So if you have a, one blog post that you want to reference it, it's a simple interface to go ahead and just link that up. It's a very simple module, but we're going to go ahead and get started and we will see, uh, see how it works and you'll be able to use it in no time. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the Linkit module page on Drupal.org. You can see some information on how are the images and how it's supposed to work. You can see it provides you a simple interface. It's an autocomplete and you can start to search and it will search and show you the content on your site. So it's very handy and you can add the actual link itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at which version we're going to download. So you can see as of right now, the 8.x-5.0-beta7 version is the most recent. Again, this is in beta, but if you read the version status, this is the one that's under active development, where the 4.3 version is in maintenance only. So it says you it's in favor of the 5.x version. So that's the one that we have downloaded here on our test site. If you come back and you go to the modules page, and I search for link. You can see the Linkit module is not installed yet. And it just says it provides an easy interface for internal and external linking with WYSIWYG editors. So let's first see how it works without it. So I'm going to open a content page and I'm going to add a new article. And we're just going to call it test article and you can see I have the link option here. So if I wanted to link something, I'll just highlight it and click the link. And you see I would have to paste this in. So if I wanted to go to google.com, I could. If I wanted to link within the website, maybe to a different article, I'd have to go open that article, copy that link, and paste it in here. So it doesn't allow you an easy way to link internally. So I can go ahead and save this. And you can see the link does work, but again, it's an external link. If I wanted it to be internal, it just wouldn't quite work the same way because this would be, if I copied in the entire link here, it'd be HTTP colon slash slash, you know, the URL of my site slash node slash four, for instance. Well, that's not necessarily what I want. I want it to be a, a relative link that just links directly on my site. It doesn't have to use the whole HTTP part isn't even necessary in the link itself. So let's go ahead and install the Linkit module and let's get it configured. There's a few steps you have to do to get it working. So we're going to go through those first. The first thing before you go to any of the Linkit configuration pages, you're going to want to go to configuration, content authoring, text formats and editors. And we're going to go to our basic HTML, but you could do this with any of your text formats. I'm going to click configure. And down here, I'm going to look for the one that says Drupal link. And you're going to make sure you want link it enabled. I was already testing it, so I have it enabled from before, but just make sure you have that enabled there. And if you're not familiar with text formats, there's a lot you can do. We're not going to cover all that in this episode, but you can change the buttons. You can change what's available. You can change information about what kind of images you can upload. There's a whole bunch of things. You can enable different filters. So we're going to go ahead and you can see there's one that was added, Linkit URL Converter, which updates your links that are inserted 
to point to the entity URL aliases. So we may want that if we wanted to use the URL aliases. I'm not using URL aliases right now, so I'm just gonna leave that off. But if you want it to be a clean URL, you're gonna probably wanna turn that on, okay? Let's test it out and see what happens. So I'm gonna click Save after I enabled that. And now we're gonna go back to configuration and we're gonna go to link it. And you can see there's already a default profile. Now, what are profiles? Well, they allow you to search for different types of links. So let's say for instance, I wanted my article pages to only, or any, anything in the basic format HTML text box to only be able to search for articles and basic pages. Let's say I had other things, other types of content uh, that I didn't want for whatever reason. I didn't want people to be able to search for using Linkit. I can control that with different profiles. I'm gonna show you an example of how that works, but a profile is pretty basic. It has a name and it has a description, but each profile also has matchers. So we're gonna to wanna to manage our matchers and that controls what different type of data can be searched for within Linkit when you're searching that autocomplete field. So if I click edit here, you can restrict the suggestions to selected bundles. So I'm gonna show you that. You can group it by a bun the, which bundle it is. You can include unpublished nodes. This will only show if they have permission to view the unpublished nodes but if you want them to be able to link to an unpublished node, it's possible. Uh, you can see this is how it's suggested. So let's go ahead and go back and open up a new tab and we're gonna create new content again and see how this would work this time. We'll create an article. Again, it's using this basic HTML text format. So when I go to add a link, I can start typing in test and you can see I have test two, test article, test page. So let's configure some of these options. Let's go back to our content manager and let's group by bundle and click save just to see how that changes the interface here. I'm also gonna add some text. So link this please and I'm gonna highlight it, click the link and now if I start searching for test, you can see it groups them content article. So these two are articles and then a basic page. So if I wanted to link to a basic page, simply click that. It puts in the, the actual URL there. I click save. I didn't apparently select the entire thing, but it creates the link. So let me go ahead and try that again once. There we go. And now if I were to save this, just very quickly, it's just gonna be some simple content with a link that will link to this test page. Nothing too crazy there, it's very simple. Let's edit this and let's go back to this matcher and let's change it one more time. So let's change it so it's only gonna show articles. So it's not gonna allow me to link to that basic page. I'm gonna click save and go back to my article. Refresh one more time. You can see I already created that first link, so I'm gonna leave that. But I'm gonna enter another link. Now I'm gonna to link to article. If I click this link option here and I search for article, I'm gonna select article one, click save. And if I go ahead and save this, you can see now I have a link, that first one that goes to that test page, and then also a link to this other article here. So as you can see, it's pretty basic, it's pretty straightforward, but it allows you to very easily link between different types of pages internally on your Drupal website. So the last thing we're gonna try is we're gonna try to actually add a URL alias and see how that affects the actual links. So if you see, if I hover over this, it's node slash one, it's node slash two. You probably don't want that on your site. You probably want to use clean URLs. So I'm going to create, actually go to one of my other articles. Again, I have a bunch of test ones in here. I'm going to edit it and I'm going to give it a URL alias. I'm going to call it test two. And you know, maybe I'll actually want article 
let's save that. Oh, of course, I need the slash. So slash article slash test two. Don't forget that. And now you'll notice if I go here, it has a clean URL. If you look at the very bottom of the page down here, this would take me to that clean URL. So I'm going to go back to this page from the first article and let's actually try to link to it and see what happens. So I'm going to make the text say link to clean URL so it's easy. I don't remember, I think it was test two. Oops, there's not, looks like I need to make sure I have everything selected. For some reason I wasn't doing that. Test two here. So you can see it says node three, which isn't exactly what we want, but let's go ahead and save it. You can see this brings me back to my node, but it does not have the correct URL. If we go back to our admin and we're going to content authoring, text formats, and editors, let's see if we can fix that. Remember, we're changing just the basic HTML text format. You could do this on any of these, assuming they allow links, of course. And let's go down here and let's do link it URL converter. So update links inserted by link it to point to entity URL aliases. So ideally, this is going to allow us to link, if we go back, to the correct URL alias. So I'm going to just save this. I don't know if this will automatically change. It did. So you'll notice all I did was go in and resave it. I don't even know if I had to do that, to be honest. But if you hover over it, you can see it now brings me to the clean URL. So you're probably going to want to use URL aliases. But again, it's pretty simple. Um, it works both ways, and it's a nice, helpful, handy module. So that's it for this time on the Daily Dose of Drupal. I hope you learned how simple and effective the Linkit module is to allow your content editors on your site to link between different pieces of content on your Drupal website. So go ahead and try it out. Use it. Let me know if you love it, hate it, dislike it, strongly agree, whatever you think um, on the module. If you have ideas for other modules, send me an email, shane at codekarate.com, go to the Code Karate website, use the contact form, or reach out to me on Twitter at smthomas3. However you want to get a hold of me, there are ways if you have ideas for future episodes that you want to see. Again, thanks for watching the Daily Dose of Drupal. Support me on Patreon, and we'll see you next time.